Welcome back to JJ Falcon Attorney at Law. Uh we're in the middle of a trial. We we just had uh the first witness and we're on to the second. He is a man who claims to have had an excellent view of the people going in and out of the Louvre at the time of the incident. I call upon Monsieur Toussaint Kingley. Could the witness please approach the stand and recite the oath? Hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, right, the oath. Uh, I swear to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please state your full name and occupation for the court record. My name is Toussaint Kingley and I am a person who fishes. Person who fishes, you are a fisherman. Oh, oh, is that how it is? I thought the French justice system was better than this. I beg your pardon? Here comes Toussaint Kingley, the kingfisher. Clearly, he must be a fisherman because, didn't you hear, all kingfishers are fishermen. Well, you are carrying a fishing rod. And, and, can a man not carry a fishing rod, reel, and bait without being branded a fisherman? Look, look, the prosecutor is carrying a riding crop. Clearly, he must be a horse jockey. Oh, for pity's sake. Fine, fine. We can list your occupation as person who fishes and not fisherman. Thank you. Actually, why do you carry a riding crop, Severin? I've never seen you ride a horse. I don't know, JJ. Why do you, a 30-something-year-old with no health problems, carry a cane? This is veering quite far off the course. Could the prosecution please get back to his questions? Of course, Your Honor. Monsieur Kingley, is it true that you were nearby the Louvre at the time of the incident? Yes, I was sitting upon a railing of the Pont d'Art. Pont d'Art? That's the new bridge that just a stone throw from the Louvre's south entrance, correct? That's right. And what were you doing at the time of the incident? I was fishing. Kingfishers, am I right, Falcon? So you would have plenty of opportunity to see the people who entered and exited the palace. Can you tell us who you saw? By the Louvre's a bitty place, I naturally saw a lot of people. But at 9am, I saw the king, Louis-Philippe himself, enter the building. He was surrounded by his entourage, of course. Then around 9.30am, I saw this shifty-looking fox lurking around the entrance. Your Honor, I object to the witness's use of the term shifty-looking. It's a vague and biased description. No, really, he looks super shifty. I saw him rubbing his paws and cackling gleefully. <laughs> and then I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem. Rub the stem of the rose, you say? As if you were applying something to the flower, perhaps. Well, Monsieur, I really shouldn't speculate. Of course, it was wrong of me to ask such a leading question. But yeah, it definitely looks like he was putting some sort of powder on the stem. Wow, even I wasn't expecting such a bold admission. Members of the court, it sounds like what we have here is a direct... Witnessing of the defendant radiating the murder weapon. The defense claims that the rose was never poisoned, and yet here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. I smell perjury. You do? No question. He saw a shifty-looking criminal writing poison and cackling near the scene of the crime. That's not believable at all. I think you might be right. I wonder if I have any evidence that calls Toussaint's story into doubt. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Really? This nonsense again. You just heard the witness directly describe your client writing poison on a rose. What is there to question? I'm just trying to uncover the truth, your honor. Ugh, fine, do your thing. Go on, Falcon. Go make a fool of yourself. Cross-examination time. Um. 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 You say that you're sitting upon the railings of the Pont d'Art on the morning of the incident. Yep. Is that a good fishing spot? I assumed you would be better off fishing upstream, away from the city. It's okay, you'd think the pollution would scare off the fish, but some species thrive in it. I managed to catch a 70 centimeter Xander from that spot the other day. Really? A 70 centimeter Xander? What bait were you using? Good question. See, some like to, some like to use worms, but I've found that a good roach will always triumph. I object! This is completely off topic. Sustain, sustain. Discuss your fishy business once the trial is over. Yes. What entrances can you see from the bridge? Yep, the Pointe Arts is a great vantage point for seeing the Grand Gallery's south side. What about the other entrances? The other entrances? You mean like if you were entering from Tulia Garden or the Palace to Carousel? No, I couldn't possibly see those areas from the bridge. But of course, that isn't relevant. Monster Kingly witnessed Prince Juan entering the south entrance with flower in hand, and that's what counts. Uh, no. Uh, 
a shifty looking fox. You claim you saw a shifty looking fox. Yep, super mega shifty. Are you sure that the fox was Prince Juan? There must be at least 100 foxes in Paris. How do you know that the fox you saw was Prince Juan? Well, he was wearing a suave hat that hanged low over his eyes. I hear that's how they wear them in Spain. I am not much of a fashion expert, but the rest of his outfit looked quite out of place for the French winter. Is that all you're going by? His fashion sense? Oh, I nearly forgot. I heard him call a passerby senor. I thought that was peculiar. Well, that's him, all right. Yeah. Uh... I guess we'll be racist. That's not a valid testimony. All foxes are shifty looking by default. Whoa, that's not cool. Yeah. We've moved past our need to hold back animals we don't like through the use of oppressive stereotypes. Well said, prosecutor. Slurs are archaic. Now we as a society can hold back animals we don't like through much more subtle institutional means. Right. Wait, what? Uh... How about the powder? Yep, saw it with my own eyes. Are you sure you saw powder? How far away were you from the south entrance? 20 meters, perhaps? 30? I'm somewhat doubtful that you can make out powder being applied to anything at that sort of distance. Monsieur, I don't claim to have seen the powder itself. I said that it looked like he was applying powder to the flower stem. It could have been a wax or a liquid or whatever, but the guy was definitely putting something on the flower. Well, that's nice and vague. Are you sure it was a rose? Pretty sure the red petals stand out quite nicely on a gray January morning. So you are confident, you are absolutely sure, that you clearly saw a bright red flower in the fox's hands. What are you getting at, JJ? Prince Swan didn't possess a rose? I think that he may have been in possession of a sprig of monkshood. Or even just a simple daisy. Really, you're claiming that Prince Juan did not possess a rose despite 22 witnesses testifying to seeing him handing a rose to the king. There is zero doubt that Prince Juan possessed rose on the day of the murder. Uh, no. No. Okay, how about King and his entourage? Indeed I did. Who was in the king's entourage? Well, there was the king himself, obviously, and there were quite a few guards. Maybe four or five, including a big dog, who I hear is the guy who died, Major Howell. I think that was all. I see. It is my understanding that the king does most of his work in the palace Palais Royal, which lies to the north of the Louvre. So it's a little strange that you saw the king enter from a south entrance, is it not? I know what I saw, monsieur. Are you really calling this basic fact into question? I don't- I don't know! I don't know! Um... Ah! No! Okay, I got it. No, not that button. Okay. No! Okay, we're gonna go back- we're gonna go back to... Uh, this part. What if he used another entrance? To the west. That's a big what if. Do you have any evidence that Prince Juan entered the loom from Tillier's gardens? I have definite proof that Prince Juan approached from the west. I'm doubtful too. Go on, JJ. Show us this definitive proof that Prince Juan entered from the Lou entered the Louvre from Tullier's Gardens. This. Look at this. A book page. Page 44 of Don Quixote specifically. It was found just outside the Louvre's rest entrance. This proves nothing. I'm not done yet. Take a look at this. Don Quixote. This is the book Prince Juan has been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe he has had it on his person for some time. And yes, page 44 is missing. That was the first thing I checked. You do realize what this means, don't you, Severin? The defendant was present in Tullier Gardens prior to entering the Louvre. This also means that, in all likelihood, the defendant entered the Louvre from the west entrance, not the south. He could not possibly have been seen by Monsieur Kingley from the Pont d'Art. What? I know what I saw! A fine theory, Falcon, but maybe the defendant took 
the long way around. One can still travel from Tuliers to the south entrance by walking along the river. An extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre-murder scenery? Let's not say silly things, Kokoriko. Okay, maybe the defendant deliberately left the page there to mislead the investigation. Now you're the one who's blindly speculating. It, it's not blind speculation, it's a viable hypothesis. You are fond of logic, aren't you, Kokoriko? Let's talk about Occam's Razor. When torn between two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must side with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. Which of these theories takes fewer assumptions? One, the page from Prince Juan's book fell out on his way to the Louvre's south entrance. Two, Prince Juan deliberately planted the page on the off chance that it would be discovered, then he took the long way around. How dare you, the nerve of you to lecture me on such basic philosophical concepts. I'll stop lecturing you when you stop making such basic mistakes. Please calm yourself, what is the point of all this yammering? The ultimate point is that Toussaint's testimony is fabricated, made up, utter fiction. No, everything I've said is the utter truth. I suspect that the witness isn't even a fisherman. I'm not a fisherman. See, he admits it himself. That's not what I meant. <laughs> what a twist. I'm just jumping back and forth with my favor with these guys. You have something that will put this arrogant falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You concede? On this point, at least, Falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component of Monster Keenly's testimony is false. Ah, no! This doesn't mean that Prince Juan is innocent, of course. All Falcon has demonstrated at that this particular witness is unreliable. But I did see something. I really did. All right, so maybe I didn't exactly see a shifty-looking fox. I made that part of the story up. But I did see a swan lurking around the south entrance on the morning of the murder. A swan? Do shut up, witness. Your word is mud at this point. How can we possibly trust anything you have to say? Uh, Your Honor, Judge Romulus, we're out of time. We're ten minutes overdue to start on the Hare versus Tortoise trial. Oh my god. Is it's that late already? Curses. I was hoping we could have the case wrapped up in a single trial session. It is a shame, but ultimately, an accurate sentencing is always preferable to a speedy sentencing. Yes, all right, I don't need to hear your moralizing. Court will resume this Friday, the 21st of January at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. Prosecutor, do your damn job. Get the stupid fox of conviction already. I will do my best to ensure that justice is served, Your Honor. Yes. A lot came up in that trial, huh? Yeah, no doubt about that. But something's bothering me. Why would that fisherman guy, Monster Kingly, lie on the witness stand? Maybe he was coerced? That's just what I was thinking. Maybe the real murderer threatened the fisherman into making up a story about Prince Juan. Let's keep an open mind. Anything is possible at this stage. But to be perfectly honest, something else is bothering me about the trial. Prince Juan, by feeding us a string of half-troops, our own client has significantly damaged his chances of escaping the guillotine. That's true. We've wasted his precious time on the Juan hunt. Excuse me? Um, uh, excuse me, Monsieur Falcon. Sorry to bother you, but, uh, this letter just arrived. I think it's for you. A letter? For me? I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Have you been demoted to courier status, Rupert? Oh, hush, hush, Sparrison. I don't need to be uh, pitied by a first-year dropout. Oh, good. Come back. So what does the letter say, Falcon? It's it's a threat. A threat made with cut-out newspaper letters. Whoa! I didn't know those things actually existed. Existed. Let me see. Falcon, stop your investigation or there will be consequences. Scary. There is no question that this letter originated from Major Howell's murderer. He or she must be aware that we are getting close to uncovering the truth. Sounds about right, but why would a person write with cut-out newspaper letters like this? Masking one's handwriting would be the most common reason, although I can't help but wonder why they would bother since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. We're still going ahead with our investigation though, right? Yeah? Absolutely. If a lawyer were deterred every time they received a threatening letter, they would never get any work done. Besides, with only three days before the next trial session, we can't afford to be worrying about petty things like this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, wow you're right, let's make those days count. A new day and the end of the video because yeah we rule we did things right sort of my favorite with the jury is meh um okay i will see you next time everybody bye